We're glad to know you're still there. It's time now to go to the press and see what we can lift off the press. Uh, that means the headlines for today uh, on uh, some of our national dailies. We're glad to have joining us Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos State. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Kolawole. Good morning, my brother. Thanks for having me. Okay, it's another wonderful day. Uh, there may not be money, but there is life <laughs> and there is uh, happiness which we can choose to get or not to get because let's, let's say happiness is a choice wherever you find yourself. Okay, so... That is true. Yeah. We're starting this morning with the Guardian newspaper <clears throat> and then um, the first headline here, slow e-payment channels worsen cash, Eulotide troubles. Uh, that's the first headline here. The, the Christmas was celebrated in a very, very low key uh, to a lot of people, especially some workers in the federal civil service that, were, um, that celebrated Christmas without salary. A lot of people said that they were not paid for December as they celebrated Yuletide. And now cash payment, e-payment, and all other things worsened the situation. What, was your pers what is your perspective about... Uh, uh, what happened during the Yuletide, especially as, as regards the cash crunch we're, fi crunch we're fighting? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm now the rest from the studios, uh, from the control room, it's much. Okay, yeah. but I, I can hear you loud and clear without any hindrances. Yes, I am here. Mm. Uh, talking about the repayment. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, let me quickly say, uh, I did my Christmas in Lagos, and I did a little bit of uh, uh, moving around. Mm -hmm. I can say that... Uh, Your account is low. What a moment. Uh, we're talking to Tunde Kolawole and we're looking at the headlines. Uh, we will return to Tunde Kolawole to have his comments on all the headlines. In the meantime, what we're going to be doing is um, just to give you a rundown of all the headlines and when he comes, we'll be taking them one after the other. We'll begin with the Guardian newspaper, uh, the one he was answering when we uh, went off like that was... Uh, Slow e-payment channels worsen cash, Yuletide troubles. That's uh, the biggest headlines on uh, the Guardian newspaper. And then we have smaller headlines. Over 50,000 soldiers in counterterrorism separatist operations nationwide, says C, Chief of Army Staff. Saboteurs hoarding Naira dollars now on federal government's watch list. Okay. Uh, that is also on uh, the Guardian newspaper. So if you're hoarding Naira or uh, dollars, you are now on the federal government's uh, watch list. That is if they know you. Senator laments rise in Taraba killings calls for emergency. We have responsibility. Okay, that you can find that on page 28. We have responsibility to ensure Nigeria's stability, Tinobu tells governors. That's on news page 3 on the Guardian newspaper. Uh, Boxing Day, how harsh economy spoiled fund for many Nigerians. That's Metro page eight. Uh, you can find that story. APC alleges plot to uh, pilfer eight billion naira from Kanu coffers. That's on news page 28 on the Guardian newspaper. Uh, two months after, varsity teachers insist they're being denied four month salary. News page three, Guardian newspaper, that's where you'll find that. Another headline says, fast-tracking justice dispensation through alternative dispute resolution. It's an editorial on page 12. Middle Belt threatens self-help as death toll in Plateau killing hit 155. That is on news page six on the Guardian newspaper. So those are the headlines on the front pages of the Guardian newspaper. We move now to Nature News. Nature News uh, has the leading headlines on Nature News as um, Green Nigeria Initiative, federal government to plant 25 million trees in 2024. The writers are budget, 
budgets uh, 100 billion for green bond, allocates 15 billion naira for great, great green wall. I think Kola Wale has uh, joined, uh, rejoined us. Uh, welcome back, uh, Tunde. Thank you, yes, I'm back. Okay, so you were saying that you mm -hmm. went around uh, Lagos uh, a little bit yeah. before Christmas. Okay, let's continue with that. I mean, I, I have been spending Christmas in Lagos over a long time now, and I haven't witnessed the kind of Christmas that uh, I saw uh, this last, last time around. Everywhere was dry. Uh, people were looking for love. The kind of festivities, merriment, and um, singing, dancing, musicians playing in different places, and all that. There wasn't, wasn't things there. And uh, just like uh, the papers in the pocket, getting little cash to really uh, do some of the transactions that people ordinarily would do during Christmas in terms of uh, buying food, grocery, meat, and what have you, and drinks for family members, relations, and all that, were all on very, very low key. Which tells us the reality that. Um, this city thing is, uh, is a real, and that the government will require to do something about it, rather than start uh, telling uh, stories and uh, saying people are holding the currency and what have you. If you know people are holding the currency, must you announce it that they are on your work list? Holding currencies are an economic uh, sabotage. What the government really should do is to go after such persons, arrest them, and prosecute them in a court of a competent jurisdiction. But rather than face realities, you find that government without dishing out the propaganda stuff uh, against uh, the people. My suspicion is that uh, the government is uh, mopping up uh, cash, the cash in the system, so as to bring down inflation. Uh, inflation has been hyper. Uh, over 20 percent, and um, if it continues like that, this might spiral out of uh, uh, control. So, I would rather want to say that there is a monetary policy that the government is implementing that is at the bottom of this capital currency that we have uh, uh, all over Nigeria. And as regards the performances of the e payments and all that. Well, it has never been top notch, uh, even when uh, currency wasn't as scarce. You and I will know the performance of um, the e payment is dependent on the service providers uh, that we have uh, in the country. That is the telecommunication uh, company. Yeah. And the performance of the telecommunication company, and know that, just like I had said, hasn't always been excellent. Why is it not excellent? It is not excellent because um, the technology that we have deployed in that area isn't uh, the latest technology. In some other parts of the world and northern, most of the telecommunication companies operate through satellites. Look at the most um, uh, facilities now. It just is required to put an antenna somewhere, anywhere in the world you are able to see, it, simply because um, they are operating through satellites. The telecom providers in Nigeria should be looking at the possibility of ways and means of really joining their counterparts in the other parts of the world where satellites now controls and help them to regulate, disseminate, and get messages across the people via all the telecommunication platforms that we have in the country. Uh, the government here I want to say to find some other ways and means to really control inflation. My advocacy has always been that the cost of contract in the country, in terms of craft services and other contracts, is too high. There's no justification for it. The allowances, monument salaries, and all that of the politicians is also way, way out of, uh, of uh, reasonability. So, furthermore, uh, I am not even too sure that we have um, a holistic view that the CBA has the accurate data 
as regards the amount of money in circulation. So they need to look at some of these areas. It's required to know the actual amount of money in circulation to be able to implement some of the monetary policies that they are presently implementing. Yeah, well, well, while we're talking about trying to mop up the cash from the uh, in circulation, uh, nobody's talking about what happens when you use e-transactions, the kind of charges that come <clears throat> with the e-transactions and the kind of uh, uh, failed transactions that you, you find because you're talking about uh, the service providers being the ones that are responsible for whatever happens. But nobody's talking about this uh, to address these issues because a lot of people who should ordinarily go to the banks to keep their money uh, are very reluctant nowadays. They, they intend to keep their money at home because they can spend it. You go to the bank to collect your own money. They're not giving you the money just because they want to mop up the cash. Uh, how do you survive if you need this money to do whatever you're doing? For instance, if you're a farmer, the farming season is about to kick off and then you're going to get your money to go and hire people to do uh, the clearing or anything that you need to do in the farm. You cannot access this money. That means that whole year is destroyed. So people are resorting to keeping this money at home, yet you want to mop up uh, the cash that is in the economy. How practical is this? Is it going to work at all? Because I don't see it working. I don't know if you have a, a better insight to that. Well, you are correct. Uh... Uh, but uh, my take is that uh, who even has good money to keep at home now? Hmm? Almost all of us are living on a shoe string uh, because of the hyperinflation in town. No matter what money you get now, uh, by the time you go to the market, you find out you can't buy most of the things that you used to buy uh, with the money. you require required to take... Uh, Put sums of money now to buy just a basket of, uh, of tomato, a basket of onion, and then a bag of rice and what have you. know? So these are challenges. Uh, the monetary policies of, uh, of the government, not just this government alone, all the civilian government that we have had uh, has not been working, especially with regard to the, to the government before this one. The government before this one was reckless and the money that it was borrowing, the money that it was spending, uh, you don't start uh, spending what you don't earn. But that was what we saw in the last uh, administration. Those are some of the things that led to high inflation. Where you have very low productivity, not just in the area of agriculture, but also in manufacturing, and then your oil is no longer available to sell in the international market. You are likely to face the kind of challenges that we are facing now. And I'm sorry to say that even though this may sound unpalatable, uh, it appears to me that the situation may even get worse in the coming days, in the coming months, and in the coming years. Except the government really sits down and be honest with the people of Nigeria. I will advocate let the government begin to focus its attention, its energy on food security. Let's go back to agriculture. If we can provide food for our people, the problem will be have a, a sort. And of course, we also require to do something decisive with regards to security. The security situation in the country has totally broken down. Nigeria has become like a broken head that is uh, almost impossible to really fix or put together. Mm. But we must find a way around it if we want to continue to live as a nation, as a united country, as a one people. That I mean, uh, just like uh, Peter Obi said, the president, I mean, the presidential spirit of the Labour Party. Look at the number of people that were killed in Plateau State. Even in one situation in, um, that is presently going on between the Israelis and the Palestinians, that kind of number of people are not killed in one single day. Unlike what we are seeing in the communal or intertribal uh, clashes that we've been seeing all over the country. Well, talking about security, um, we'll just take these two, two headlines together. The Senator laments rise in Taraba killings calls for emergency. And then this other one on page six of uh, 
uh, the Guardian says, Middle Belt threatens self-help as death toll in Plateau killings hit 155. In fact, from inside information that we got from the calls that we made, uh, they said that it's possible that it's more than 160 people killed in one day. Now, the worrisome thing is that yesterday on Daily Trust uh, newspaper, we had, uh, when the story was that 145 were killed, the defense chief was telling Nigerians, take ownership of security. And it worries me. At what point, legally, can we as a nation say we're declaring a state of emergency on security? Because for me, I think we have reached that point where a state of emergency should be declared. Are there encumbrances that will militate against this kind of pronouncement? Are there conditions that will make this impossible, that is still keeping us here and we're not declaring a state of emergency in, um, in security? Or <laughs> so when I hear people say we need to declare a state of emergency with regards to security, I laugh. Uh, why do I laugh? And uh, this killing that we seen, that we are seeing all over the country, has been going on for more than twelve uh, years or thereabout. Mm. It started with the Bukwara insurgency, and then it graduated to banditry and lawlessness. And then we also have the separatist uh, movement in the southeast and all that. Uh, one of the primary responsibilities of government is to provide security for its people. In fact, any government that cannot guarantee security has no business being in power. So when government begins to say that they now require to declare a sense of emergency before they can guarantee security, it means that the government is not serious uh, at all. That is something you should do as a matter of road trip. That is something that you should do you know, failingly without them giving any excuses and, and what have you. And then you must be seen to be making very serious effort in that uh, election. I uh, once pointed out that what we have in our hands a classic, is a classic uh, guerrilla uh, warfare that is being waged by the bandits in the different parts of the country. When you look at this plateau killing and all that, uh, it took place on the leaf of uh, Christmas. That is a period in which the, all the community they wanted to attack will be relaxed, um, will be in facility, will not be expecting that anybody will come at that kind of very official time to attack them. And the people uh, will just be too uh, sedentary to be able to put up a uh, defense. And then the people coming to attack them will show up on them and begin the mayhem. That is a classic guerrilla activity. So, and that is what has been happening in most of the communities in which this kind of killings have taken place. What this tells me is that the Nigerian security people, the army, the police, the PSS, and what have you, the civil defense, and then uh, the local vigilantes, who require to really think and change their own modus operandi, their own strategy. The public will also have to adopt a guerrilla approach to fighting this insecurity that we have in our hands. When we begin to use uh, the classical warfare methodology, we might not be getting the result uh, that is uh, required. Uh, and then we might be making uh, very terrible mistakes. But uh, we saw in, uh, in Kaduna Ivikano, uh, not too long ago, in which uh, drones were unleashed on the, on the community uh, who were celebrating uh, Ibel uh, Malud. The soldiers, the army, the security chiefs will require to really fine tune the strategy and tactics for comedy uh, insecurity and bandages all over the, the country. And uh, more importantly, it will also appear that uh, the struggle to have access to mineral resources and then uh, to Russell castles and all that is also behind some of these bandages and what have So we require to do something with regards to access to the mineral resources of the country in the different parts of the country. This phase is way, way beyond the mere intra intercommunal clashes. Uh, economic activities will appear, will appear to be behind um, uh, some of these security challenges that we have in our hands. People want to go and steal other people's uh, cows and other animals. They want to take over 
they are grazing land. I mean, the people say they are grazing land. They also want to have access to minerals in the different communities and then be able to uh, take them without paying royalties and the taxes uh, to government. So it, it's a very serious situation. And they accept we begin to put more attention in this area and less attention on politics. We pay too much attention to politics. We shouldn't take less than 10 We should, no, should not take more, uh, more than 10% of our time. But almost 90% of our time is spent on politics and also <laughs> non economic activities that we have in our hands. Okay. It's possible to rein in this insecurity, but in doing so, there has to be a change of strategy. There has to be more commitment. And then the local communities too will have to be will have to take things into their hands because I'm sorry to say self defense is a fundamental uh, a right under the Nigerian constitution. Where the state has not been able to guarantee citizen security, then the citizen would have the right to find ways and means to really defend them, defend themselves against external aggressors. You don't sit by, you don't uh, uh, start watching. When people will just show up on you and begin to kill, massacre, injure, and maim you on a daily basis, such as we have seen in the last uh, 12 uh, years or year about. And more importantly, like I said, we must blame the politicians for all these things. Because they are secure, they are not thinking about providing security for the ordinary Nigerian citizens. Hmm. Well, uh, let's move to, on to other matters. We're taking some uh, uh, stories from Nature News. Uh, the Federal Green Initiative, that's the leading headline, Federal Government to Plant 25 Million Trees in 2024 budgets 100 billion naira for green bond and then allocates 50 billion naira for great green wall your comments please yes yeah, it will be it will be a good development if they are able to do it if they are not, not if they are not merely paying lip service to the insecurity that we have i mean i mean to this green revolution thing that they are talking about but don't forget that uh, in the return to this civil war, we have always had very active budget uh, that is in um, the amount to fight the desertification and then to also regain Nigeria in the different parts of the country. But what has always happened to those budgets? Have we always had results for those budgets? The answer is no. So in fact, what has always happened is that uh, those budgets for those monies are put in the budget for the politicians and the civil servants and their, their, their friends to be able to have access to state resources. At the end of the day, no green uh, initiative will be seen all over the country. And the country is being ravaged from the north to the south, west to east, on a yearly basis. And because this climate change is a reality, in fact, the insecurity we are talking about has part of its roots in the challenges that we are having in the area of uh, climate, in the desertification that we have all over the country. The cattle realize or the cattle others are moving more and more down south to find the green pastures for the animals. They are having more frequent clashes with the farmers uh, because uh, the farmers want to till this land and then the animal. Uh, the realists will also want to provide pastures for the animals. So, if we have been able to fight um, the desert and uh, the desert and Kormen, in Kano, in Kadima, in Chikawa, in Meduguri, in Boronuna, and what happened? Some of the challenges that we are having in some of these local communities would have been reduced. Uh, I would want to see a situation in which we have a commission that will really be able to monitor uh, some of the things that are said to be earmarked to be done in the area of the certification and improving the environment in which uh, we live. Too many times, monies are earmarked, a lot of unfair take place in terms of replanting the, the, the trees and cleaning um, oil pollution in the Niger Delta area. But uh, times without number, 
you'll find at the end of the day, these things are mere propaganda in the matter of politicians. They are not committed to executing at all. And uh, except we begin to pay attention to our environment, we will be merely cutting our own noses in order to spite ourselves. Because once the environment is gone, we will all be in trouble, very serious trouble as a people. And insecurity will further arise in the country. Mm. Okay, um, there's this story also on Nature News. Uh, two stories, actually. Lagos pledges enforcement of environmental impact assessment. That's on the one hand. And then Lagos State Government urges residents to stay away from distressed buildings. Uh, those two stories are coming from Lagos State. I'm more interested in the uh, stay away from distressed buildings. Um, I don't know. Uh, there doesn't... There, it doesn't seem like Lagos State has a deliberate policy for housing that will accommodate the people that are in Lagos. And so people resort to a lot of, uh, a lot of practices, some of them very harmful, uh, to make sure that they just have a roof over their heads. Uh, if you are not resorting to going to Ogun State, to, to be coming from Ogun State to work in Lagos State and pay taxes in Lagos State and all that, it doesn't seem as if they have a deliberate policy on housing. I don't know if you have any information uh, whether they have uh, or something that has given you the, the hope that something will be done about housing in Lagos State. What, um in fairness to the legal state authorities, since that uh, tower collapsed uh, in Nikoi, they are building an environmental institution that have been very, very active in ensuring that people who are building houses comply with building regulations, in ensuring that the houses that are distressed are marked and the citizens are asked to evacuate uh, those uh, buildings. But the truth of the matter is that uh, our people are very stubborn. Even when houses are distressed, and uh, the government or the control agencies ask the people to evacuate those houses, our people will usually refuse to evacuate those buildings until they are forced to do so. But if we have been having voluntary compliance, if people have been willingly compliant, with the regulatory authorities, with their instruction, with the orders that are given, I am sure we'll have a better environment. Yeah, but let me, let, me just, let, me just say the, this. let me just say this, Mr. With Kula. the cleaner environment, even in places where we have baskets, where cans are provided, you find that our people will still not use those facilities. They will throw their electricity into the drainages. Uh, they will throw it on the road, and then they mess up the environment. But, you but be shocked. Just, just a moment, Mr. If you, are Mr. Flying over, if you are flying over Lagos, and you look at Lagos from, um, from the air, you will find that as one of the most beautiful cities uh, in Africa. But when you're on the ground, the kind of um, pollution, the kind of litter, the kind of um, abuses that you will see, and we will not very really put you off. What the government or the respective agencies will also begin, I mean, will require to begin to do serious advocacy. It's not just about um, providing facilities with law. We really need to educate the people on the need to comply with making the environment uh, pollution free, litter free, and then they need to stay away from the first building. Okay. When you don't stay away from the first building, what you really do is uh, risking your life. As the building could collapse any time, and then the people will be killed, and other men there uh, for life. But in addition to enforcing regulatory uh, activity, I mean uh, decisions, we also need to look for ways and means to provide cheap housing for our people. I am not too sure any citizen will want to live in a decent house if they really have alternatives mm. and where they could stay and their safety guarantee. Building a house is not a tea party. Renting a house in a place like Lego is not a tea party. It's not very, very expensive, especially in the urban areas. So 
All these things must go together in as much as we want to enforce regulations and what have you. In as much as we want to keep the environment clean, we must also be able to provide cheap houses for our people in such a manner that they will not be adamant in continue to live and stay in the house that has been said to be distressed and what have you. The mortgage institutions are not working. And when the developers build houses, they are very, very expensive. Nothing stops us if the government wouldn't be building houses to make facilities available, to make finances available at about between 2 and 5 percent interest so that the developers will be able to build cheaper houses. We can also help the developers with a cheap material with which to build houses for the people. Except we are able to do that, all the preachings, all the uh, sermons and what happened with regard to, to the need to stay away from um, the same houses will come to north. The litter, the pollution, the messing of the environment that we also see also has a relationship with uh, the conditions um, that we have in most of our cities, especially in the Lagos area. You find an environment where not more than uh, 5, 10, or 50, 20 people should live. Thousands of people are living in those areas, leading to congestions and what are them. So where an environment is contested, where too many people are occupying a small space of land, the consequences you always see that it is difficult to keep such an environment uh, hygienic. And then uh, people will do all manner of things just to be able to lay their head on something and have some sleep. Mm. So, advocacy and then provision of cheap houses, provision of cheap materials for people to be able to buy houses, granting of loans to civil servants, for people in the security, the army, the police and all that, to be able to build their own houses to help a great deal. And then we should also be able to prepare the land in the rural, in the outskirts of the city, make roads, water, light, and electricity available in the newly developing areas. If those people have access to, to energy, to water, to good roads and all that, and they can access their workplaces from those different places uh, very easily and cheaply, I am sure some of the challenges that we are having in some of these areas will uh, be a thing of the past, or at least will be reduced, if not totally eliminated. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering, I have two concerns. Uh, you know, some of the people who live in distressed buildings uh, live in those buildings because they are the ones that are a bit affordable. There don't seem to be um, deliberate efforts to monitor uh, what goes on in tenancy. Well, I don't know if it is covered by law, but landlords in Lagos State seem to do as they like, if I, if I may say that. And they just wake up one morning, then tell you that uh, the, the rents have gone up like maybe 300% or 200% as the case may be. No regulatory body that will hold them, will rein them in and say, no, this cannot be done. It happens like that. And like I always said, a lot of people, maybe up to 70% maybe, uh, are living outside Lagos and coming to work in Lagos. And they pay tax here. Uh, so that's one reason why people stay in distressed buildings. Secondly, it doesn't seem as if they also um, give this warning and orientation at the onset. They will leave you to build. They will give you a land somewhere that you should not build because the integrity of that place you're building on is not even good enough. Don't they do land integrity check before they allow you to build there? But they will give you a place to build. You build, they leave you from foundation till lintel level before they come and mark X with a red paint. And then what happens from there is that you go to the office and talk to them and then they let you continue to, till you roof the house. Uh, before you know what is happening, the, the house has tilted and uh, maybe twin houses, close to where I live, there are twin houses that are touching each other at the roof. And you're telling that person after spending all that money to leave that house because you are going to demolish it or something or something. If you need to do this, shouldn't you start from the beginning? Why sell land 
uh, to people when that land cannot hold a building in the first place? And then why let the landlords to do whatever they like just because they built their own houses? Is it not covered by law that these things should be done and to protect the tenants and everything? No, it is. Person? It is. Let me quickly say this. Uh, that uh, certain land cannot hold houses. There is no land that cannot uh, that you cannot build a house on. Look at the so-called Panama Island. These are some free lands that people are building houses. It's a function of money, a function of your resources. If you have the means to do the kind of foundation that you should do, uh, you should be able to build houses uh, anywhere in most of the places that. Uh, some of these houses that have challenges are being built. But when a poor man now wants to go and build a house uh, in a landfill area, he is likely to face a lot of challenges because he will not be able to do the proper foundation that he is required to do. As regards the law, there are ample laws in our tattoo books that uh, take care of uh, something. For example, you are not supposed to start building a house without a building plan. And part of the building plan, or what the control agencies would do, is ask you to do, do soil tests. And the soil tests will tell you the kind of foundation that you require to, 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 to do before you begin to build, or the kind of material that you require to use in certain uh, places. If you are building uh, in, um, in the swampy place, the material you use is different from what you are likely to use in the dry land. All those regulations are in there, but because uh, processing building plants and getting some of these tests done are very, very expensive, cumbersome, and they take a long time, a lot of our people will just fight uh, those things and just go ahead to build their houses. Because if you have about 10 million to build a house, and you are going to be spending about 8 million to do soil test, get building approval and what have you. For example, in Lagos, you are told you need to have um, a certificate of occupancy before you can get a building approval, mm. or before you can build a house. I find that very strange. A deed of assignment is as good as um, a certificate of occupancy. Why would I insist that people must have a certificate of occupancy before they can build? Uh, it's not too late for me as a person. Because to process a uh, certificate of occupancy and some of these other integrity things that I've talked about uh, could be very challenging and could be very, very expensive. So if we are able to reduce the cost of these things and we can fast track the processes, and also educate the citizens on the importance of compliance with all the building regulations and what have you. I am sure we'll begin to have improvement in that area. But with my experience in the area of property, in the area of property, the challenge that people have always faced is the cost of compliance. It is the time that will be wasted. And also uh, the resources in some other areas that, is, uh, that's, uh, that are needed in some other areas. Mm. Okay, uh, well, let's move to the Punch newspaper. Um, federal government plans fresh regulations for OP, money points, others. Uh, these are small uh, banks, uh, small microfinance banks that have come into Nigeria and they are uh, doing a lot of things. The regulation will come and I'm sure uh, there will be tighter taxing and so many other things that will uh, clip their hands a lot. And Nigerians are asking the questions. The regular banks, uh, what kind of regulation uh, is, is, is in that sector uh, to hold the regular banks? Because they do things that a lot of people have lost confidence in the banks whether you want to collect money, whether you want to do a transfer, whether you... Some of these mushroom banks, permit me to call them, are the ones that give loans to a lot of Nigerians without even any collateral. They are the same ones that you do transactions on their app and you're not charged a cover. But the regular banks are doing 
charging people and doing a lot of things that people don't, are not comfortable with and regulations are coming. Is it not just partial to, <coughs> excuse me, to bring more regulations to this uh, type of banks and leave the regular banks to just go scot-free as Nigerians are perceiving? Well, with due respect, my suspicion is that uh, each time the government have always said they want to bring in some regulations yeah. in certain areas, they will be uh, surprised at the end of the day what they want to do is to either start taxing or increase the taxes that they are already getting from such a person. And when they do that, it leads to increase in cost of living. Yeah. That will mean more taxation uh, for the people. For me, most of these so-called low-pay people, they are agents of the bank in a way they are working for the bank, and they, they are a bank they themselves. Mm. What we need to do, the regulations that apply to the bank, in a way, so to say, if it is working, you really don't need to start uh, tinkering or imposing more burden mm. on these uh, people. Because, whom do you find in those areas now? Some of the people that have been returned from the banks, some of the people, some of the young graduates, some artisans who have learned their trade and all that, and have been able to find jobs. Most of the ones are the ones that you now find who are operating some of these uh, uh, money points and uh, making money available to the people in the different street corners. Uh, Imposing more burdens on them in terms of taxes, in terms of rules and regulations, and modus operandi uh, might be detrimental to their survival. Uh, because I have read somewhere in which people are operating some of these facilities or these uh, services in the southeast have cried out that they come in the southeast. I started imposing very positive taxes on them. And because of that, they will also increase whatever um, uh, commissions that they are getting from those who come to use their facilities and what have you. For God's sake, all these uh, petty, petty trading activities are not the fundamental issues. The fundamental issues to address, in my humble opinion, is the cost of governance in this country. Mm. It is the cost of contracts. It is for us to be able to address what is happening in the different local governments all over the country. And with the local governments are now paralyzed, they are now comatose. And some of the insecurity that they are finding in the different parts of the country is as a consequence of the paralysis that we have at the local government level. In the past, the local government used to be the first line of defense when it comes to security. But because the governors have refused to allow the local government to operate to function, that line of defense has collapsed, it's broken down. So let the government face the commanders of the economy and leave the petty traders. Okay? The petty people, the ordinary people who are trying to earn a living. You give them an example when they give you a thousand naira, I mean five thousand naira, whatever. The government will take a hundred naira from your money. Mm. Are those the people you want to start to regulate? What is the level of profit that they are making? That you now begin to focus on um, due attention on them. Of course, the government, the government should concentrate its efforts on uh, something more important. Like I have said, the cost of governance, the cost of contract the comatose uh, the situation of the local government, need for food security, and of course, we need to fight the challenges that we have in the area of banditry, uh, which I think the 
to fight the struggle for dominance for the control of mineral sites may be responsible for and not as the perpetrators mm. is merely trying to earn a living. Okay. Uh, let's just take a final one before we wrap up. It's related to what we are just talking about now. Federal government will go after economic saboteurs next year. That's according to the Senate leader. He insists National Assembly will pass 2024 appropriation bill December 30. Now, saboteurs, uh, they say some people are hoarding the Naira, some people are hoarding the dollar, and then they will wait till next year to go after these people. That's my concern. Um, they say they will go after these people next year. And we are already suffering uh, the effect of that hoarding right now, whether it is being hoarded by the banks or is being hoarded by individuals and all that. So if you are going to go after them, my question is why not go after them right now? That's what the federal government <laughs> Thank says. You. Next year. If they know who the economic saboteurs are and they are not going to attack them, is it that the revision of duty? What is the responsibility of government? Is it not to ensure that nobody don't have anything adverse that will affect the economy. The economy is the life wire of any nation. That is the jugular of the nation. You don't stand by and allow anybody to destroy the jugular of the nation. So you ask yourself, why has the ESCC been established? What about the ICPC? What about the special profile unit in the Nigerian police? What about uh, in the civil defense? Hmm? What about um, those who go after uh, the drug uh, uh, parents and what have you? These are their responsibilities. You don't start, you don't need to start announcing that or trumpeting that from the rooftop again. If you know people are sabotaging the economy, you as a government, you have the coercive uh, uh, apparatus to really be able to deal with uh, such uh, uh, people without telling us that you have identified certain persons who are sabotaging the economy and all that. Hmm? Don't let us waste our time on this kind of uh, <laughs> a very right to talk. The truth of the matter is that uh, it is because certain persons lack ideas and they really don't know what is happening. That is why they are talking this way. If they have ideas and they know what is happening, they wouldn't be telling us that they know certain persons are sabotaging the economy and that it's the year 2024. But they begin to go after them. <laughs> Furthermore, when you look at our statute books, whether the ESCC Act, the ICPC Act, the activity of the special fraud unit, the last, I mean, the, um, some of these other control agencies or security agencies and what have you, they are all established to deal with these things. And then even the penal code, the criminal code, the constitutions are not that. All the stand laws of the land have provisions within them to deal with economic sabotage, to deal with stealing, to deal with fraud, to deal with misapplication, misappropriation, and investment of public funds. And all forms of economic sabotage. That even if you take the, the ICPC Act away, you take the ESCC Act away, the other law that we have in this country is enough to deal with all the economic activities. All the, the economic efficiency that we continue to see all over the country. So, the government should uh, uh, desist from uh, this idle talk. They talk to us as if uh, you are people who cannot listen, who cannot think, who cannot see what is uh, going on. Mm -hmm. It's uh, mere propaganda that they continue to teach them, rather than engage a very serious act of governance. Mm. Okay, well, uh, this is where we have to draw the curtain for today. Uh, Mr. Kolawole, thank you so much for lending your voice to what's going on in the country. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Happy New Year in advance. Wish you a Happy New Year too. Yeah. And a lovely day. Thank you very much. We've been okay. talking to Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos on Off the Press. We'll take a short break and when we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>